leads it to auscultation. After palpation of the arteries, you will know the approximate level of the block. Now auscultate along the entire course of the artery for a systolic brewery of stenosis, partial obstruction or aneurysm. Also, routinely auscultate over the major arteries, that is abdominal aorta, femorals, popliteals, axillary artery and carotids. Now we will come to some special tests for peripheral vascular disease. Tests for lower limbs. The Burgess test. Ask the patient to lie supine and raise the leg, knees extended to about 90 degrees. If the limb shows marked pallor, then the test is positive. Note the pale white color of the right foot when it is raised. The pallor appears within a few seconds in a severe disease and may take 2-3 to three minutes in a mild disease. If the test is positive, lower the limb, let it resume the normal color, then raise it gradually to note the angle at which the pallor appears. This angle of the leg with the horizontal is termed as Berger's angle of circulatory insufficiency. Berger's angle less than 30 degrees is indicative of very severe ischemia. Note that in this patient, the pallor has appeared at an angle of 30 degrees. Now we will test the capillary filling time. With the patient supine, raise the legs till the affected leg becomes pale. Now ask the patient to sit on the edge of the examination table and hang the legs down. Note the time taken by the affected leg to resume its normal pink color. This is the capillary filling time and in peripheral vascular disease it may be prolonged to 15 to 30 seconds. Now let the patient sit with the legs hanging for 2 to 3 minutes. The leg will assume a purple-red cyanotic color termed as dependent rubor, indicating impaired circulation. A normal healthy limb will not show any change in color in raised as well as dependent position. Now we will come to some special tests for examination of chronic ischemia in the upper limbs. The Raynaud's Phenomenon If you are suspecting Raynaud's Phenomenon, dip the fingers of both hands in ice-cold water and watch for blanching or pallor of the fingers. If the fingers become blanched, take the hands out of the cold water. The fingers will become swollen and cyanosed and gradually as the spasm of the arteries wears off, they become red and engorged due to flow of blood in the dilated capillaries. Then perform the tests for thoracic outlet syndrome. Edson's test. With the patient sitting on a stool, feel the radial pulse of the affected hand. Ask the patient to turn the face as much as possible towards the affected side. Ask him to take a deep breath. If the pulse becomes feeble or is obliterated, then the adsense test is positive. The forced inspiration contracts the scalenus anterior, which is an accessory muscle of respiration, which elevates the first rib and compresses the subclavian artery at the thoracic outlet. The test is also performed by asking the patient to turn the neck to the opposite side and to take a deep breath. And secondly, by keeping the arm extended and pulling it downwards, noting whether the pulse diminishes. Elevated Arms Stress Test Ask the patient to abduct the shoulders to 90 degrees with maximum possible external rotation, keeping elbows flexed at 90 degrees, thus raising the arms above the head. Now ask the patient to brace the shoulders back and open and close the fists slowly for a period of 3 minutes. If the patient's symptoms of radiating pain, cramps, paresthesia or Raynaud's phenomenon appear, forcing him to stop, then the test is considered as positive for thoracic outlet obstruction.
a normal individual will only feel some fatigue in the forearm muscles. Lastly, we will perform the Allen's test for the degree of patency of radial and ulnar arteries. Ask the patient to clench his fist tightly. Now compress both radial and ulnar arteries at the wrist separately using both your hands. Ask the patient to clench and release the fist till blanching occurs. Now ask him to open the fist and release the radial artery. Note the time taken by the hand to regain the normal pink color. Then repeat the test and after blanching the hand, release the ulnar artery and note the time taken by the hand to regain normal color. If any of the arteries is blocked, the palm will remain blanched for a longer time when pressure over the blocked artery is released. To conclude, we started the examination of a case of ischemic limb with a careful inspection of the gangrene and the ischemic limb. Then we examined the arteries, lymph nodes and the movements. We palpated the arterial pulse at various levels and auscultated over it for a bruit. Lastly, we performed the special tests for peripheral vascular disease. In the lower limb, we performed the Berger's test and capillary filling time. In the upper limb, Raynaud's phenomenon, Erson's test, elevated arms stress test and Allen's test. This completes the study of examination of a case of peripheral vascular disease.